Hi, it's Marissa from BumblebeeApothecary.com and today I'd like to share with you all of my tips for traveling on the GAPS diet. So I'm going to share with you all of my tips I have traveled on the GAPS diet multiple times, including an overseas trip to Ireland while on the GAPS diet. So let's get started and jump into the tips. So first of all, keep in mind that traveling on the GAPS diet is doable and you can still have an enjoyable trip. The probably my number one tip for you is to relax and not stress and overthink it, but to remember to enjoy your trip. When you're getting ready to travel while you're on the GAPS diet, you definitely want to plan ahead. You want to have a list of everything that you need to bring, think through where you're going to be staying, what kind of things you can bring, what kind of things you should plan on buying once you're there. Have the whole plan mapped out in your head and on paper ahead of time. And then write it all down in a list. Make a list of the things that you're going to bring, the things you're going to make or buy once you're there. You want to think carefully about the different ways that you can travel. Some ways are more restrictive like airline travel. There's a lot less that you can easily bring. It's still possible, like I mentioned, going to Ireland and bringing things along. But you have more flexibility if you're driving, obviously. So kind of think that through, weigh the pros and cons of the different modes of transportation and figure out what's going to work best for you. You'll also want to think about how long the trip is going to be, make sure that you have enough of whatever you're planning on bringing for the whole time. You'll also want to think about different places that you can stay. Really, really try, if at all possible, to be staying in a place that has a kitchen that you can have access to. That will give you so much more flexibility and enable you to do this less expensively and have the best results. So if that's not possible, there's still some ways that you can make it work. You kind of have to get creative. For shorter trips, you can sometimes get by with maybe bringing along a toaster oven for reheating things or a hot plate you can plug in. But for a longer trip, you're going to definitely need to have access to a kitchen. Another thing to keep in mind is that if you're on the GAPS introduction diet, it is much harder to travel than if you are on the full GAPS diet. Once you're on the full GAPS diet, you have a lot more variety of foods opened up and available to you. and You can also be a little bit more flexible. You're having meat stock once a day rather than three to five times a day. So it's just much easier once you get to that stage. So try, if you can, to plan trips so that you're traveling when you're on the full GAPS diet and not on GAPS, GAPS intro. That being said, I have traveled on um, a short road trip on the GAPS introduction diet and it is doable if you really have to do it. I had to get kind of creative. I brought along a lot of foods. I used some of my friends kitchens at different times to cook more of the meat stock and squash and different things that I needed. So you can make it work if you're determined and you have nice friends who let you use their kitchens. But in general, try to travel on the full GAPS diet instead. In my experience, it is pretty much always the case that you're going to need to plan on packing some of the food that you're going to bring. So with the current airline restrictions for carry-ons and different things like that, you're going to need to just know ahead of time that you're going to need to check some type of a package. What I have always done is I have a duffel bag and then I have a insulated, soft, flexible cooler type of a thing that can go inside that duffel bag. So that's like my food bag. In the parts of the duffel bag that are not insulated, I have my non-perishable things, my supplements, you know, anything that I need to bring along that's not allowed in a carry-on that I'm going to need food related once I get there. And then in my insulated bag, I'm going to bring along my frozen foods that we're going to talk about in a second that I decided to bring along. So now let's talk about the foods that you're going to need to bring. The top of the list for these ones is meat stock. You can't really buy meat stock that fits the criteria for when you're on the GAPS diet. So that's something that you're going to want to make ahead and bring at least to get you started. If you're on a short trip, you could bring enough for the whole trip, but if you're going to be away longer, I would recommend bringing enough to get you started, maybe for the first couple days, and then plan on getting set up to make your, to make your own meat stock once you're there so that you'll have plenty of it. Another thing that I really recommend trying to bring along is fat. Whatever fat that your body is doing well with and that you're using a lot of, this can be really hard to source 
from stores depending on where you're going. Oftentimes you can find some good grass-fed butter in stores, but if you're restricted to something more like tallow that's harder to find in a store, at least in the quality that you need, then that's something you'll probably want to bring along. I always just feel better if I know that I have my good fats along, even if there is a possibility of being able to buy them. I just, they're easy to bring along, they're shelf stable, they don't need to be kept cold and so I just tend to bring some along. Next thing that you'll definitely want to think about bringing is some fermented foods. So if you're in a really bad pinch, there are some brands of fermented raw live probiotic vegetables like Bubby's sauerkraut or the dill pickles, but those are not the most ideal. They're not organic and everything is better when you have full control over all of the quality ingredients and the making process. So try, if you can, to bring along your own fermented food. So I always like to bring along a thing of sauerkraut. I use a lot of sour cream on the GAPS diet. So whenever I've traveled in the past when I'm on the GAPS diet, I have brought both of these things, sauerkraut and plenty of sour cream. From there, after you have these three kind of most essential foods that you're gonna need to think about bringing, you have a little bit more flexibility after that. So for a very short trip or for the first few days while you're getting started and getting set up to be able to make more of your own food, you can think about bringing along some things that you've already made from home. Really, going through this list, you just kind of think about what things do I normally make at home and eat and what could be easy to bring along and travel. So boiled eggs are one of my favorites. They're really portable and easy to eat pretty much anywhere. You can cut up vegetables and have those raw, carrot sticks and celery sticks and things like that if your digestion is doing well with raw vegetables. You can bring along fruits pretty easily and eat those. And then as far as a little bit more less convenient foods to bring along, but still definitely possible, I like to have some cooked meats ahead of time. Meatballs are another really good one because they're kind of easier to eat on the go. You can make those ahead of time and bring them along. Of course, my meat stock and fermented foods and my fats, those essential things that I talked about before some cooked vegetables, and then if you have some baked goods like muffins or something that you've made that are GAPS legal, those are great to bring along. They're pretty portable and easy to eat on the go. If you are doing well with nuts and you have some nuts that you have soaked and dehydrated, those can be great to bring along for a snack item. So just kind of get creative and think about what kind of things that you like to make that are easy to make and bring along and easy to eat on the go and just make a bunch of that ahead of time and plan on bringing it in a cooler. Now let's talk a little bit about some things that you can buy once you're out. Now you have to be really careful with buying prepared foods when you're on the GAPS diet. You want to be in control as much as possible of all of the cooking and spices and all of that and you want to have the highest quality organic and that's not always possible when you buy something that's already been cooked or something but there are a few things that you can get sometimes if you're in a pinch and you really need to. One thing that you can oftentimes find is good quality cheeses if you have access to a health food store those can be good to get if you need to. Another thing that you can do is look for very natural pasture raised an organic lunch meat that does not have anything added to it. It's just meat and maybe some salt. So that could be something, those are pretty expensive if you end up buying a lot of them. But if you're in a pinch, that can be something that you can get. And then again, once you're out and about, if you need to buy something, the fruits and vegetables are always something that you can get. Another reason to think about bringing something like sour cream along is because Raw grass-fed dairy can be really difficult to source depending on where you're going. So if you have that already made ahead of time and enough for your whole trip, then you don't have to worry about that. The biggest, most helpful thing when traveling on the GAPS diet is to be able to have access to a kitchen. So once you're there, you can kind of just set up your kitchen like you would at home. You'll have your things that you brought along. You can go out and buy some meat and vegetables and cook just like you would at home. So then you don't have to miss out. If you're in a place where you don't have a kitchen, you can get kind of creative with a toaster oven for reheating. You will want to have a refrigerator or at least a cooler that you keep ice in to keep things cold. But you can get kind of creative with that. A crock pot you can bring along to make meat stock or different foods. So those are some ways to keep it possible even when you don't have access to a kitchen. 
When I was on the gap diet, I actually traveled to the University of New Hampshire and took some classes there and I brought along a lot of stuff. I also cooked there. They had a little mini kitchen type of a situation, a refrigerator and a stove that was shared with other people. And so I was able to set up my crock pot and different things and cook and stick to the GAPS diet. I was able to buy the different things that I needed. I brought along my ferments and some fat. It was totally doable. And then the trip going to Ireland, I brought along the same essential things, my sauerkraut, sour cream, and then a bunch of different foods just to get me started. So I made meatballs, I made some muffins. I think I, I think that's most of it. And then once I got there, we were staying in a place where the meals were provided. And this was kind of the neat thing about going to a different country where they do things differently than we do here in the United States. They, they were way more open to the idea and used to from scratch cooking and not doing the additives. I gave them my whole list of what I could eat and could not eat and they customized my food for me based on that information that I gave them. So I was able to stick to the GAPS diet eating the foods that they made there too, which was pretty neat. And then just remember, like I said in the beginning, don't let the stress of all of this ruin your trip. Try to not stress about it. Be prepared with your list, your essential things that you wanna bring along, your plan for what you'll do for your cooking once you get there, and then try to relax and enjoy your trip. Okay, I hope that you found these tips helpful. Let me know in the comments if you have any trips coming up. And if you have any questions specifically about different situations and how to make the GAPS diet doable. Also, let me know if there are more videos that you would like to see on different topics. I love hearing video ideas from you guys. If you're new, I wanted to mention that I have a free ebook that is called GAPS Diet Essential Recipes. It has all of the recipes that you need to know how to make to go through the GAPS Introduction Diet all in one place, completely free ebook. I'll put a link below where you can grab that if you're interested. Okay, if you like this video and found it helpful, give it a thumbs up. Share it with anybody else who you think might want some tips for traveling on the GAPS diet. Here on my channel, I show you how to make nourishing recipes for nutrient-dense food, natural remedies, and DIY skincare and home products. So if those are something that you're interested in and you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I get out two videos every week. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.